This is an introduction to exercise 2H2D, inclusive, uh, reviewing simplifying, expanding, solving algebraic expressions. Now, I've written up a couple of definitions. You don't have to write them all, uh, but it's a good idea to write down the ones you don't know off by heart. Okay? Uh, reason being, not because I'm going to ask you to tell me what a specific term is, but if I tell you to find a specific term, then you need to be able to tell me what that is. I do realize I made a pun there. I mean term as in terminology, not term as in algebraic term. All right, so a couple of definitions. Uh, terms. Uh, it just means a combination of numbers and variables connected only by a multiply or a divide. Just to be super clear, uh, for example, a, b over c, which we know is a times b, all divided by c, is a term. Okay? And on the other hand, this letter b is a variable. Okay? So a variable or a pronumeral, basically anything that's just represented by a single letter. Pretty straightforward. Um, and terms, generally speaking, are uh, separated by pluses or minuses. Uh, like terms, you guys should also be super familiar with. Like terms, we're saying where the terms have the same pronumeral factors. Just in case you've forgotten, just a quick refresher, AB and AB squared are not the same thing. So just because they have the same letter, or letters, sorry, doesn't mean they're the same thing. They have to have the same number of those letters. So for example, AB and AB, as, or AB and BA are both like terms, but AB and A squared B is different. Coefficient is just the number in front of a pronumeral. So for example, 4A, the coefficient is 4. Constant is just a term consisting only of a number. Uh, this one's imp super important, super basic, but it's important because we'll be using it later when we do linear graphing as well. So constant is just a number. Just in case you're wondering why it's called a constant, uh, if you have, for example, y equals to 4, we know 4 is a constant. If you graph y equals to 4, you actually just end up with, let's say that's our plane, you just end up with that, a constant. So that's why it's called a constant. Uh, distributive law is just a fancy way of saying when you expand brackets, you need to multiply everything out. Uh, just in case you're not familiar, if I have, for example, a bracket b plus c, it's not just a times b, it's a times b, and also a times c. So in that case, we have the distributive law, where you're multiplying each term inside the bracket with the coefficient or the term at the front. This applies if you have two terms in the bracket, three terms, four terms, whatever it is, you need to multiply every term by the term on the outside of the bracket. While you guys run that down, I'm going to jump straight into the first example, stuff that you guys should be super, super, should be super familiar with. There we go. Uh, so it's just substitution. So we have a equals 5, b equals a negative 2, and c equals 3. So in that case, remember, we need to make sure we use brackets. Uh, I use brackets incessantly. I use brackets way too much. But that's so that I can keep track of where the values need to be. So for example, which negative is associated with which number or whatnot. Okay? I really recommend you guys do that. You don't have to, but I definitely recommend it. So, in this case, I've got 7 times, and instead of writing times, I put stuff in brackets. Alright, that's me. Alright, 7 bracket 5, because I know that's 7 times 5, but it separates those two values. Minus 2 bracket, and then I'll write A, which is 5, minus C, which is 3. You see how I've used way too many brackets, or way more brackets than I actually need? But it makes it super clear to me which order things need to be solved in. 7 times 5 gives me 35 minus 2 bracket. Now, I could go 2 minus 5, so 2 times 5, sorry, and then 2 times negative 3. But I'm going to solve it using the brackets first. So 5 minus 3 gives me 2, which gives me 35 minus 4, which gives me 31. Sounds really familiar to you guys? Thank you very much. Uh, b squared, same thing. So we're saying negative 2 squared. This is a very common problem. This is why I love using the brackets so much. If you don't have the brackets and you just write negative 2 squared, what does that look like? What, what would the answer to that be? Just this. It'd be? Well, technically, and you would notice this if you put in the calculator, technically this is negative 4. Why is that the case? Oh, because 2 is like... Two Correct. Is and when you guys do complex maths, or more complex maths, I should say, uh, you need to make sure you include the brackets, because this right here 
is interpreted as negative of 2 squared. We're only squaring the 2, which gives us a negative 4 in answer. But we're not doing that. We're saying all of negative 2 squared, which should give us positive 4. So that's why I think the brackets are super important. Minus a, which is 5, times by c, which is 3, which gives us 4, minus 15, is as negative 11. Okay. Uh, simplification. You guys are generally pretty good at this, but I do want to double check our division or fraction simplification. So it's same how I would treat a uh, equivalent fraction. I would say, all right, well, there's 6 and 18. I'm going to divide both of them by 6 because the highest common factor is 6. So I end up with 1 and 3. So I get 1ab over 3b. Is that all I can do? Because... B, good. I'm going to cross that out and end up with... 1a over 3. Is that how I'll write the answer? A over 3. Thank you very much. I'll write a over 3. Now, quick question. It's not part of this, as in that would be your final answer, but is that the same as 1 third a? Yeah. Yeah, it is. Yeah. Sometimes some questions will require you to be able to manipulate these fractions, take them out uh, in order to be able to solve them or understand the formatting of the question. But we'll leave that for now. This as a final answer is completely acceptable. Uh, 3x plus 4 minus 2x, super easy. Gather your like terms. I know 3x and 2x or negative 2x uh, are like terms. So 3 minus 2 gives me 1x plus 4 or in other words just x plus 4. Any questions? Okay. We're going to move on to expanding and then quickly move on to solving. So expanding, uh, of course, we need to make sure we use the distributive law. So we're saying 2 minus bracket, uh, 2 minus 3 bracket x minus 4. So I need to multiply each term out. So it's 2 minus 3x. And then what's wrong with me writing this? It's plus. How do you know it's plus? Yes, but why is it plus? Tw why is it plus twelve instead of minus twelve? Isn't it three times negative four, which gives me negative twelve? Thank you very much. It's negative three. We always associate the positive or negative with the term after the uh, yeah term after it. Okay, so it's negative three times my negative four, which gives me positive twelve. You would not believe the number of times students get this wrong, even year eleven and year twelve maths. Okay, it's a super common mistake, so we're going to make sure we avoid that. From here, we get negative 3x plus 14, and that's our answer. This one over here, same idea. I'm going to multiply it out. So 3x, so 3 times x, plus 3 times 2y, which is 6y, minus 3x minus y. Yeah, so because right now, there's no number there, but it's a negative 1. So negative 1 times the 3x, negative 1 times my positive y, which gives us that. Uh, am I done? No. Why not? Yeah, collecting like terms. Uh, so I know 3x and negative 3x cancel out, and I end up with 6x plus, uh, sorry, minus y, 6y, sorry, minus y, which gives me 5y there. All right, final step, exercise 2D. You guys are flying through these exercises now, by the way. Uh, solve each of the following equations. 3x plus 1 equals 10. When I say solve, of course, I mean look for the unknown pronumeral. Uh, 3x plus 1 equals a 10. And hopefully this is a revision for you guys. But if not, please make sure you pay close attention. I know it's plus 1. So I'm going to minus 1 both sides. Here's my question. Why? I see right here. Oops. I see right here. It's a 3x. So instinctively, I'm thinking it's x times 3, right? So I do the opposite and divide by 3. Why don't I just divide by 3 on both sides now? Yeah, but why do I have to do the 1 first? So what's wrong with me saying divide by 3 on both sides and say 3x divided by 3 is obviously x and then plus 1 equals to 10 over 3. What's wrong with that? Thank you very much. In the case where you divide both sides by 3 first, you would have to divide the 1 as well. We would have to divide the 1 and get plus 1 over 3 equals to 10 over 3 and then you solve it, it gets 9 over 3. It gets really complicated. So we want to try to do the easiest method, the path of least resistance. 
So right now, the plus one seems to be the easiest one to get rid of. So we minus one both sides. And we get 3x equals 2, 10 minus 1, which is 9. And then we divide by 3 on both sides. And we get x equals 2, 3. Okay. Uh, next one here. X minus 2 minus, uh, sex over 2, sorry, minus 5 equals to 6. Should we times by 2 on both sides first or plus 5 on both sides first? In this case, does it make, is one of them drastically more difficult than the other? No. Uh, instinctively, the easiest method, of course, is just to add 5 on both sides. But let's try and multiply 2 on both sides first. So I get x minus 5 equals to 6. What's wrong with that? Good, I have to times every term by 2 on that side, so x minus 10 equals 2, 12. Any questions about that? Okay, so now that I've multiplied both sides by 2, let's go ahead and add on each side. Add 10, that's 22. If I put 22 into here, 22 over 2, it's 11, minus 5 gives me 6. Perfect, I've done it correctly. So both methods are valid, and a lot of methods are valid, but one of them may be more difficult than the other, resulting in decimals or fractions or whatever it is. So let's just make sure we uh, take the path of least resistance. Any questions about our content from today? No? Awesome.